Welcome, Natalie. Thanks so much for being with us. In a few weeks, you're going to take the helm as CEO of a company that holds more than $65 billion in assets around the globe. How did your career path lead you here? Uh, wow. When I'm, I'm listening to you, those $65 <laughs> billion, dollars, even if it's Canadian dollars, put me a lot of pressure. Um, that's a great challenge and that's a great honor because I moved out to Montreal just four years ago and I thought that this country was very bold and audacious to uh, appoint me. Um, I think that um, looking back at my career, which is almost 30 years already, I've done almost all the jobs relating to real estate, coming from M&A to property management, including, of course, investment, asset management. So I think I've been prepared to uh, a kind of um, global and uh, diversified mandate, and that's why probably they, they have chosen me. It's an exciting time. How have the diverse perspectives and opportunities and experiences impacted your career and success, do you think? Um, that's true that I've I've worked on three different continents, uh, six different jobs, different companies, different cultures. I think that in real estate we design the world, uh, so we have to integrate all those diversity in the way we are looking forward. So I think that being able to have lived and experienced myself different cultures helped me probably in this direction. And besides that, being able to um, yes be confronted to different style of uh, styles of management, different organization, I've questioned uh, a lot of the things I used to do. Uh, so that's why maybe it has prepared me to this uh, to a leadership, and that has probably improved my le leadership over time. What would you say drives you? What compels you to dedicate the tremendous time that you do and the energy it takes to lead a global company? It's not only for my job, it's everywhere, I think, in my life. I try to be at the right time, at the right moment. Mm -hmm. So to be useful, to have an impact, to make a difference, even if it's a slight one, but in good faith, in goodwill. Do something that I'm going to be proud of in the future and say, OK, I've been able to participate to a kind of solution for uh, the people. And I think uh, real estate is, uh, is about people. What have you gained from the corporate board service that you've done that you think would be informative to women who are also pursuing that? Those two positions, executive and non-executive, are very complementary. You don't see the things the same way. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very interesting and I, I really think that all the experiences I've had in the non-executive as being a director has probably helped me to be a better executive because I, I'm able to, to say, okay, why do I need, why would I need in this position? Uh, so I think that those two things are very important to each other. And um, to be honest, in, in France, when I come from, we have uh, implemented uh, several years ago the quotas in the boards. At the beginning, I was really not in favor of that. But looking back at what has happened and compared to some other countries, I think that it's probably the only way to make things change. And I think that it's important, especially when you have the power to make things change, to influence and to impact. And it's what you can do when you sit uh, around the table because men, um, have bias, we have bias too, but at least they're questioned then their bias when there are women around the table. So I, I think that it's going, going to be the way that executive committees are going to, to have more uh, women in the future. So for me, once more, I think that we have to be a little bit more, um, yes, in favor of regulation or any kind of law that's going to help uh, we men to be more around the table and to be able to raise their voice when it's necessary. Thank you so much. Merci, Natalie. Merci, Wendy.